Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Veg All Guy. I've got a couple of lost foam casting videos coming up soon, so today I'm going to quickly run through the foam preparation process that I like to follow. The whys and wherefores have been covered in more depth in a previous video, but for those just wanting a quick look at the foam side of casting, hopefully this video should be pretty useful. There's two main types of polystyrene foam available, expanded foam and extruded foam. Expanded foam is the stuff that you find in packaging material and is far easier on the metal, needing less energy to burn. Expanded foam is certainly the choice of the professionals, but they have the advantage of having perfect foam patterns to work from. For us amateurs, expanded foam is crumbly, flaky stuff that's hard to work and get detail on. Extruded foam is favoured by model makers because it tools brilliantly. It can easily be sliced and sanded to shape, but it is denser than expanded foam and needs more energy to burn. Because of this, ideally you should minimise the amount of extruded foam you use when casting. However, I've always been awkward and invariably I use extruded foam as I'm looking for good detail and precision in my castings. And there's a few little tricks to help achieve that, which I'll cover in a moment. When I'm producing several identical castings, I usually make a pattern out of MDF. Here is a wheel pattern that I'll be using today. Take your time when making your patterns, because if it's wrong here, every casting that follows will also be wrong. I'm looking for a finished casting of around 20mm thick, and I have some sheets of 10mm extruded foam. So I begin with my hot wire cutter, slicing out some basic squares. I need two of these to get my desired thickness, but there's no glue in just yet. Instead, the pattern is gently screwed onto the foam. Now it's time to rough out the shape, removing the bulk of the unwanted foam, and again I'm going to be using my hot wire cutter, but a small handsaw would work just as well. In other videos, you've seen me using a flush trimming router bit in my drill press, but today I'm going to be using my router table. As tatty as it is, it still cuts nicely. The trick is to go nice and steady. Be careful, watch your fingers and don't rush. To cut out the spokes, I first use a spade bit to cut out a nice large hole in each section. Then it's back to the router for more flush trimming. doesn't do a bad job does it? Now I'm going to add some witness marks for realignment later. To reduce the overall amount of extruded foam and also to help venting gases, I'm going to hollow out a little of the insides. So these marks are there just to remind me which side I'm working on. Here I'm using a Dremel to carve out a small channel all the way around the circumference of the foam. I'm aiming to keep it central and go roughly half the depth of the material. Be careful with the screw holes, don't go over these. We can be a bit more daring on the spokes as there's more material there. And here I've joined up all the grooves without compromising the screw points. I've also carved into the hub section, but avoided going into the dead centre. The same process is repeated on the other piece of foam. Now is the time to glue both halves together, and the choice of glue is an important one. The glue I'm using isn't fast drying, but it does work well and disappears easily during the casting process without leaving any marks. I'm applying the glue thinly to both surfaces to minimise glue squeezing out of the edges. The foam is then screwed back onto the pattern, making careful use of the witness marks for accurate realignment. 
the glue will set nicely under this light clamping. A finger is run all round the edges just in case any glue did squeeze out. Now it doesn't look too bad but it is possible to get these edges even smoother with candle wax. An ordinary drinks can is cut approximately in half and then a small opening is cut towards the bottom. A few holes need to be poked into the sides to aid ventilation. Now one of these small candles can be lit and pushed inside. A small piece of candle is placed in the well of the can and this quickly melts. A brush is dipped into the molten wax and this is painted onto the edges of the foam. The molten wax seeps easily into the pores in the foam. Go steady with this, it's very runny stuff. Try not to get any wax on the pattern. If you do, you'll need to scrape it off. Wax is really useful stuff and can be used to join pieces of foam, repair dents and improve on the smoothness. It doesn't take long to cool and ideally before it's fully hardened, scrape the wax away from any surfaces where it shouldn't be. Spider page, spider page, na -na 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 spider page. A gentle touch is required here. Your finger will tell you about any imperfections that your eyes can't see. You can always add more wax if necessary. Notice that I've also painted wax onto the edges of the spokes as well. Here I'm very lightly rubbing the top face on some fine sandpaper, but there's no pressure being applied. I'm just trying to flatten the surface and remove any wax ridges I might have missed. Now it's back to the router for more flush trimming. It's worth periodically checking for a buildup of wax on the router bit and carefully cleaning this off. You should find this makes an impressive difference to the overall smoothness of the edges and you can take this to whatever level of excellence you desire. I'm not looking for absolute perfection, but if I were, more coats of wax could be added until I finally achieve this. And if you thought I'd missed out the hole in the centre, you're right. For this I needed a smaller flush trimming bit. Once the glue has had time to dry, the screws are removed and the foam pattern is ready to receive some gates. The gates are just a way of connecting the foam pattern to the plaster feeder and vents that I prefer to use and these are easily carved and shaped. Normally I make gates out of expanded foam as very little accuracy is needed here but amazingly I haven't got any so I've got to use extruded foam. Working on the bottom of the pattern, I like to fan out the gates to cover a fairly wide area, but this is just a preference. What is important is to cover the screw holes. A little glue is applied and a screw holds this in place whilst the glue sets. But I won't remove the screw until just before casting. There are still two screw holes left that need filling and this can easily be done with some small slices of foam and some more candle wax. If you take your time with this, you can achieve a seamless join. Once finished, you should have a nice looking foam pattern with smooth edges and a partially hollow center. Now my theory, and it is just my theory, is that hollowing out part of the centre should improve the overall process. Imagine for a moment what will happen when these screws are removed. There should now be a hollow channel running throughout the pattern, 
if you blow air in one end, it should easily come out the other. This should make things easier for gases to vent, for the metal to flow and for pockets of gas and air to be minimised. For me, this takes lost foam casting a step closer to conventional green sand casting. But as I say, it's just my theory. If you're rough and ready with your foam pattern, you can expect hours of cutting, grinding and filing to look forward to later. But the more time and effort you put into preparing the foam, which is very easy to work, the less time you'll need to spend working on metal, which let's face it, isn't as easy to work. And as I like to take the easier route, the foam pattern is where I focus my efforts. A good job here should secure a good result, especially if you have a good casting technique. And that's pretty much it. That's how I prepare foam patterns for lost foam casting. Whee! And I think we can call that a finished video. I hope you enjoyed this one guys, and if you did, please like it. If you've got any questions on this subject, please drop me a line. Don't forget to check out my website and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Look out for my other videos on my YouTube channel and send in any comments and video requests. So that's it for now guys, thanks for watching.